Hello and welcome to vlog number 112. This week I'm going to talk about dyskinesia in Parkinson's disease. Dyskinesia is a term used to describe abnormal, involuntary and uncontrollable movements. The symptoms of dyskinesia can look like fidgeting, wriggling, twitching, head bobbing, restlessness or swaying of the body. It can affect the whole of the body or just a single body part such as the head or an arm or leg and it can vary from mildly annoying to severe and painful when it can interfere with normal daily activities. So, what causes dyskinesia and what can be done about it? It is generally accepted that the most common cause of dyskinesia is levodopa medication, which is the medication most commonly given to people with Parkinson's. Whilst recognised as the most effective treatment for PD, Long-term use of levodopa is frequently complicated by disabling fluctuations and dyskinesias, which negate the benefits. Dyskinesia occurs most often when the dose of levodopa peaks within the bloodstream and PD symptoms are well controlled. This is known as peak dose dyskinesia. Dyskinesia may also occur when the dose of levodopa is just starting to take effect or when it starts wearing off, although this is less common. This is known as diphasic dyskinesia. Since dyskinesia can be triggered by long-term levodopa use, it tends to be more common as Parkinson's progresses. Stress or excitement can exacerbate dyskinesia. Young onset Parkinson's disease is associated with a higher risk of developing levodopa-induced dyskinesias, or LID. The five-year risk of LID is around 50% for patients aged between 40 and 59 at onset, compared with around 16% for those aged 70 and over at onset. The reasons for this are not fully understood, but it has been suggested that there are age-related differences in levodopa dynamics in PD. Severity of disease is also an important risk factor. A significant number, between 10 and 20%, of PD patients who receive prolonged levodopa therapy do not go on to develop dyskinesia, and it is thought that genetic factors are responsible. In spite of significant advances, the pathogenesis of LID is not completely understood. It is known that LID only occurs after the administration of levodopa medication, that there is a time lag between the start of treatment and the onset of LID, and there is a relationship with dosage. There are a number of theories regarding the possible mechanisms of LID, but if you want to delve any deeper into the subject, then you'll just have to spend some time with Dr Google. Something that I hadn't realised until after my deep brain stimulation or DBS operation was that dyskinesia can be a side effect. Surgery induced dyskinesia usually disappears after a couple of months but may also persist. Additionally, it can be as a result of the stimulation and I have experienced dyskinesias of varying severity dependent upon the programming of my DBS neurostimulator. In terms of what can be done about dyskinesia, the medications can be manipulated to try to minimise it, changing combinations of medication or revising your medication schedule, taking more frequent but smaller doses for example. A balance can be struck between improved mobility and dyskinesia and each patient will need to decide which they prefer. Surgery induced dyskinesia is more problematic because it seems to be caused by damage and or inflammation sustained by the brain during the insertion of the electrodes. It may subside as inflammation subsides, or it could be something that you just have to learn to live with. Dyskinesia resulting from DBS stimulation may be eliminated or reduced by careful programming of the neurostimulator. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or have a topic that you'd like me to cover in future vlogs, just leave me a message in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. Have a great week. See you next Friday.